Tim Pierce, I'm at Norm's. I really like this guitar. It's a 2001 ES-135. Very affordable. Um, hollow, soap bars, P90s. Plays great. So what I'm doing here is I'm playing over E minor, B minor, A minor, and C minor. So there's a few key changes. And the, the really the, the hardest key change is the C minor, but it's actually the coolest too. because you get surprised when you have to return to E minor. E minor. Blues lick. Go to B minor. Blues again. A minor. Arpeggio. Up to C minor, same thing. Maybe another arpeggio. Usually, I'll just find a place where my hand is sitting that I can get back to E. It's really as simple as that, and that way I can change keys. When the band goes back to E minor. So a good exercise is to try and keep your hand in one place and make it through all the keys. So we got E minor. Go to A minor. Go to B minor. Go to C minor. Back to E minor. On to B minor. To A minor. C minor. So my hand, my hand is basically staying in the same place for all those. And the cool thing about that is you can kind of hear the chords change without the chords even being there. Now the opposite approach is just to find far away places for each thing. I'll show you that. That's E minor. Maybe jump down to B minor here. Maybe jump down to B minor here. Up to A minor here. Down to C minor here. So both approaches would be good in a solo because they're different and they would keep it fresh by being kind of opposite concepts. So part of what helps me, even if I'm playing blues licks, I'm seeing chord shapes everywhere. So if, if I'm in E minor, I'm seeing E minor here. And sometimes they're just three note shapes. Let's look for E minors. Let's look for B minors. <laughs> A minor. And now C minor. So even if I'm playing C minor blues, I might jump up here to a C minor shape, a chord shape. 